Uh, Harvey kind of kept us away from here last week, but uh, week before last, we looked at Psalm 103. And uh, hear the words again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Well, I want to begin by uh, reminding you that in this passage, David's spirit is talking to his soul. Just as God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so people are triune. They are uh, spirit, soul, and body. And all three parts make up the whole. And uh, the uh, spirit is God conscious. It connects us with God. The soul is self-conscious and knows what it wants and uh, how it feels, mind, emotions, uh, feelings, uh, uh, and our will are all tied into our soul. And then our body connects us to the world and our world responds to the soul and the soul can respond to the spirit or not. And I can't go into that in great detail today, but the spirit knows the thing is knows God is in connection with God and tells our soul, lets our soul know the things of God. Then our soul must decide what to do. Religion, true religion, isn't based on emotion. So many people are under the impression that uh, religion is an emotional thing. It's a matter of the will. And it's a matter of our, the will in our soul responding to God, knowing what God wants through our spirit. And so here we see David, and he tells his soul to do two things. First of all, to bless the Lord. And we talked about that last time we were together. And then today, he tells his soul something negative, you might say. He tells his soul not to do something. Do not forget the Lord's benefits. Don't forget the benefits of being the Lord's. Now, if you have your hymnal, and yes, you do, I ask you to turn, I think it's page 28. Look on page 28 in your hymnal, and there, well, it's on 29, so you're still open to the right place. But look over, and you see the prayer that begins almost in the middle of the page there. Listen to this prayer. This is the communion uh, uh, liturgy, and we're going to be taking communion later in this service. It says, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins. And then look at that next line. And y'all read that out loud with me. All other benefits of his passion. Did you ever notice that being in the middle of the communion liturgy? All other benefits of his passion, not just salvation so we can go to heaven. There are other benefits that have been purchased for us on the cross through Jesus Christ and through the price that he paid there and putting us in connection with God, put us in the place where we can live out of Psalm 103, you see. 
where we can bless the Lord. And as you bless him, he smiles upon us. And whenever he smiles upon you, he blesses. And here we see the benefits of his passion. These are things that are available to us. And I'm not going to be able to go through them all today, but the next five weeks or so, we're going to be going through these different benefits of his passion one by one. But uh, quickly, uh, it says, he pardoned your iniquities, healed your diseases, redeemed your life from the pit, and then crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, you know, some have never known his benefits. They can't forget them because they didn't even know they were there. And this comes about through bad teaching or no teaching. Uh, I can remember a, a, a good church member of mine, a leader in my church many, many years ago, uh, wound him, he found himself in a bad, bad spot. And if he didn't come up with, I think I saw him on Friday, and if he didn't come up with $10,000 by Monday, he was going to lose everything he had. In fact, he won't know if he could borrow $10,000 from me. And I was P-O-R-E, poor back then. I sure didn't have any $10,000 to loan. But I did ask him, I said, now, if you got this loan, would it solve your problem or would it just put it off, put the inevitable from coming about? And uh, he said, you know, realistically, it wouldn't stop the process. It would just prolong it. And so it, I asked, well, have you prayed about it? And he said, well, you know, whenever I was doing well, I didn't pray. I didn't ask the Lord for anything when I was doing well. And so I'm sure not going to ask him anything while I'm doing badly. And I, I said, well, would you mind if I pray for you? And this is something that you need to know. You need to have faith for yourself. And then you need to also have faith for others. Because your faith can make a difference in someone else's life, especially in a situation like this. Situations like this, when you can do nothing, but you know that God can glorify God when he comes through. So I prayed for this guy that the Lord would make a way. And then we were having a revival that weekend and I saw this guy sitting out there and I even wondered why I'd prayed like that. I saw him sitting out there thinking, oh man, ah, bless him, Lord. I just uh, pray that after this is all over. Anyway, I was, I, I had doubts myself after I had prayed for him. So anyway, I walked up to him after, after the service. I went looking for him, couldn't find him. And so I was coming back, he just came around the corner and he was coming toward me excitedly. I said, well, so-and-so, how's it going? And he said, man, you wouldn't believe. And something had happened. Somebody had come and made him an offer that turned everything around. And all of a sudden, he was okay again. And uh, the thing is, is that he didn't, even know about the Lord's benefits, you see? And so this was an opportunity for him to learn about the Lord's benefits. But sometimes just because you know about them, you can forget them. David knew the Lord's benefits, but he knew he was prone to forget them. There are things that can distract us. Number one is prosperity. Doing well can distract you from the Lord's benefits. Um, in the uh, book of Proverbs, it says, uh, two things I asked of you, do not refuse me before I die. Keep deception and lies far from me. And then listen to this. Give me neither poverty or nor riches. Feed me with the portion that is my portion that I may not be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or that I not be in want and steal and profane the name of my God. 
whenever the Lord saw that prosperity could distract us. In fact, later on, over, well, well earlier, yeah, it's later on in uh, Deuteronomy, as the children of Israel are getting ready to enter into the promised land, and he tells them, he said, oh, uh, whenever you're doing well, and have built good houses and lived in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold and all that you have multiplies. And he just tells them, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. It is a tendency of us when we're doing well to say, I did this in my own might and to turn from God. And so, uh, David knew this, and so he tells his soul, don't forget God's benefits, and don't forget to bless the Lord. So, another thing that uh, can uh, distract us is sin. The sin of others, and of course, our own sin. Uh, Our own sin can, uh, first of all, put a wall between us. It's one of these things where, and and it's insidious, you may be tempted one time and then you, well, I'll, uh, you may just slip up and then you ask the Lord to forgive you. And then the same, you have the same opportunity at that point it becomes and you think, well, the Lord will forgive me. You slip up again on purpose almost. And then you ask the Lord to forgive you. You feel bad about it. And then Next thing you know, you're almost positioning yourself for the same thing. And then you just, and it doesn't bother you as much. And you can slowly, slowly move away from the Lord to where you forget God and you forget his benefits. Well, another thing that can distract us is uh, your, uh, your life. Just the, the just life itself. My goodness, how many things did we have to distract us this last week? Wow, uh, it's one of these things. I, I had this going over in my head all week long about forget not his benefits, and the Lord just showed me. I was just walking through. You know, there's a place in the scripture that says, "Though a thousand fall on your left and ten thousand fall on your right, you're going to walk through unscathed." Oh my. The Lord just blessed my family so. He kept us from harm. And uh, my car messed up. And uh, I won't give you the whole story, but we wound up. Sharon and I decided we we were going to uh, go get some tacos or something at Taco Bell. Taco Bell was closed and my car stuck in park. And so uh, we just decided, well... I guess we'll just have to walk home. Now, the thing is that it stuck in park earlier in the day and the tow truck came to get us and he got it back in gear. And said, oh, it's working now. Said, oh, great. You know, didn't even charge me. So then he leaves and yeah, tacos be good. Then now then we're stuck. We were with an eye shot of the car place. We were going to be taking the car. They were closed and we're stuck there sitting in our car about a mile and a half from the house. So Sharon decided we're going to walk home. And then we decide, you know, Mary's got a car. Let's call her. And uh, Sharon said, you know, I would call her if I had a phone. So I got one in my pocket. So we called my my daughter, Mary. She was just driving home. She got us home just fine. She came, picked us up. Then I called the tow truck people. They came back. Mary had to take me back to leave the key of the car. Anyway, uh, one thing after another. 24 hours late, oh, 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 the next morning, they had my car. About an hour later, they said, your car's ready. And Sharon had prayed about how much they're going to charge, because right now, things are kind of tight for us. And uh, so she was concerned about that, and she prayed. When I went to pick the car up, I pulled out my debit card to pay for it, and the guy just goes, he wouldn't charge me. He said it's just a piece of uh, stuff that was stuck in there. They got it out. It's going to be fine. Didn't charge for the tow to either. So we went. I mean, you know, my gosh, you know, we we and I, anyway, I can't go on, but we went through a lot. It says in Scripture, many are the trials 
or afflictions of the upright, but the Lord delivers them out of the law. Not that you're not going to have trouble. Jesus worded a little bit differently when he said, uh, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But fear not, I have overcome the world. Well, so I was, I was had this going through my head all week. And uh, as I was blessing him, he was smiling upon me. And uh, that's about all I can say because we're running out of time. But there's so many things that can distract us. Calamities, trouble, need, a hurricane, catastrophic illness, uh, your catastrophic illness or someone else's. Busyness in life can, to me, be the biggest distractor and get me turned away from that. You can just start down a rabbit trail doing the Lord's work and forget that you need him. It's just so uh, it's so uh, 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 easy to do. And so we need to all pause from time to time and remember sometimes a perfect storm of several of these things can come together and really just overwhelm us. And that's when we need to stop and remember his benefits. And those benefits, quickly, he pardons your iniquities. If you feel like there's stuff between you and God, he's paid the price for it because he doesn't want there to be anything. The song, nothing between. Just there's nothing between you because he's already paid the price for it. He, his par, he pardons your iniquities. If you're li living in shame or guilt, shame is when you're feeling bad for who and what you are. Guilt is when you're feeling bad for what you've done. Shame can come about even, because, even from what other people have done to you or told you. But the Lord will deliver you from that. The Lord doesn't want you to live in shame or guilt. He has a brand new day for you. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. If you're ill, remember, call upon him and he will answer you. He redeems your life from the pit. And that's not just talking about keeping us from going to hell. It's everything that's come about because of the fall. As we've experienced this past week, we live in an imperfect world. Storms come, earthquakes happen, fires occur. All these different things happen. Mechanical malfunctions take place. And through all of this, the Lord has paid the price so that God can smile on you and redeem you individually and uniquely and deliver you from that situation because you see he does crown you with loving kindness and compassion if you're feeling like nobody loves you and you're unlovable and unlovely there's someone who loves you you not who you wish you were but he loves you right now he loves the you that he created and he wants to crown you, to put upon your head, to cover you with his love and with his compassion. And if you've been feeling that you're not loved by God, you haven't read the gospel. Crowns you and satisfy your years with good things. Some of, some of us are getting on in years. And when you get to our point in life, you start thinking about how... Uh, you, maybe you have a bad taste in your mouth about your life. And the thing is, if you are remembering him and following him and blessing him with your life, he's going to smile on you. And if your life has been fruitless up to this point and you're just feeling like you just haven't accomplished anything, your life hasn't amounted to a hill of beans, he can give you a life from this point on that will leave a good taste in your mouth. I remember John Maxwell standing up and talking to a bunch of us preachers one time, and he was saying, you know, I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm looking at things starting to come to an end, 
I don't want to rest on my laurels. I want to end well. And that's the call for each one of us, not to rest on our laurels, but for the rest of our life to be the best of our life. And it can be for him and in him. You can have a good taste in your mouth about the way your life ends, no matter what's gone on before. And if all those things working in your life, and this is one of the things that us older people can really grasp now, as we live like that, he does renew our strength like the eagle. And renewed strength can be ours. Well, are any of these benefits benefits that you need this morning if so i invite you to focus on the benefit that you need and remember that it is there for you 